love about this verse it says I am making everything new and that doesn't just start when you die it starts when you give your life to Christ now how many of you would like Christ to do something new in your life think about that how many of you would like Christ to do something new in your career or new in your marriage or new in the lives of your kids well the scripture says behold I am making everything new You trust Him. You give your life to Him. You do your best to follow Him, knowing that God will work out the rest. Now notice this next passage. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, the Apostle Paul writes these words. He says, For our present troubles are quite small and won't last very long. Now, I love that because it says that no matter what you're going through, it's in comparison to heaven, it's a tiny thing. It's a tiny thing. And it doesn't seem like a tiny thing right now. It seems like this big, huge monster elephant. But when we look at it in the light of what God wants to do in that, it becomes tiny because God is the one who's holding that. Does that make sense? We're not holding on to it anymore. God is holding on. And he says our present troubles, they're small. They're not going to last forever. But notice this. He says, yet they produce for us an immeasurable great glory that will last forever. So we don't look at our troubles we can see right now. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. For the troubles we see will soon be over, but the joys to come will last forever. That's great news. The joys that are going to come are going to last forever. More than any problems that we could ever have right now. Now, the, the Apostle Paul doesn't say stress out about all your problems, right? doesn't say that. The scripture tells us we are to give our anxieties to him, cast them upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. Now, I love this next verse. Let's read it out loud together, okay? If you're a follower of Christ, this verse is going to mean a whole lot to you today. Now, notice this. Romans 10, 11. Let's read it out loud. The scripture tells us that no one who believes in Christ will ever be disappointed. How many of you ever had somebody disappoint you? Or, or didn't follow through with something. Well, the scripture says, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he will never disappoint. He'll never let you down. Now, notice this. Knowing all that, how should we live as Christians? Notice this verse in Colossians 3, 1 through 2. It says, if you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. When you're so focused about the world and the problems in the world and everything that's going wrong in the world, you can miss out on the blessing that God wants you to have. Now, how does this play out practically? Well, notice this. If you're having a difficult time in life, how this plays out is this. Know that one day it's going to end. Right? You know that it's going to end one day when we get to heaven. But not only that, know that God is with you now. In James chapter 1, it talks about how we all face trials. But he says rejoice in those trials. Well, why do we rejoice in trials and tribulations? Why? Because we know that God is with us during those times. Now, think about this, guys. What is it that God wants you to give up today to him? What is it that God is telling you this morning? Maybe you just need to let this go and let me handle it. Now my next question would be this. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to let him give it up and let God handle it? Well, the scripture says one day we're going to go to heaven. Right now, sometimes it seems like we're living in hell, right? Isn't that true? But with God... And with Jesus in our life, we can have a taste of heaven right now because of what he wants to do in our lives. Now, I just want to encourage you this morning to be thinking about what is it that God wants you to do with your life. We've talked about growing. We've talked about giving our life to the true God. We've talked about living a life of, of sin, free of sin. But we, today, I just want you to think about how would knowing... That God wants people to go to heaven and he wants me to go to heaven. How would that change the way I'm going to live tomorrow? And even today when we walk out the doors. Think about that, guys. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. You know, maybe today you're here 
and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. And if I was to ask you the question, do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven? You wouldn't have an answer. You don't know. But I want you to know for sure that you can know today that your sins are forgiven and that you can have a home in heaven. Now with nobody looking around and every eye closed,